Oh boy, I am going to get to something that should infuriate everyone, certainly in Oroville, but I first want to bring everybody's attention to uh, Scott Cahill's video that was posted yesterday, and I mirrored his video on my channel. When I say please circulate the link below, it means that I want it circulated not on my channel, but on Scott Cahill's channel, um, because I want more attention brought to Scott Cahill's channel than mine. Why? Because there's an awful lot of information on his channel. Now, I hope that everybody um, has circulated this video, what Scott Cahill has to say, who is an expert on dams, the construction of dams. Um, and I also want to tell everybody, and I may mirror this video, I hope that the Cahills are okay with this. I think in this video, I am not sure, but I think, uh, is this Lisa Cahill? They're a married couple. I'm not sure. Maybe they're partners. I don't know. All I know is that um, today posted on Scott Cahill's channel was Lisa going over information that shows that the Department of Water Resources is lying in some uh, on some facts and may be putting out misinformation. Uh, Cahill, Oroville Dam, too much water too soon. So she goes over very important information and at the tail end she says you know, it's now up to every individual, this is a paraphrase, but it's up to every individual who lives in that area to um, come to a decision that you need to make regarding what's happening with this Oroville Dam. And I also, uh, just listening to a few minutes, which I'm going to play, uh, this really resonated with me and I identify with Scott Cahill and I believe Scott Cahill. All right. It's, it's kind of what I do. I can't seem to stop, even though I know better sometimes. And I can't stop from telling the truth. Um, it's something that I truly believe in with all of my soul. I, I make mistakes. But I will never lie to you. I will never tell you a lie. I may tell you something and it may not be true because I was misinformed or the data that I used to make the determination was wrong. But I will never intentionally lie to you. That is something that I've worked on since I became a man. It's something that I take my greatest pride as a man in. Okay. I wish everyone felt just like Scott Kayo. Something you work on and something that when you finally get to the place where you cannot lie, you do not want to lie, you cannot lie. Yes, people make mistakes all the time, but when they come back and acknowledge the mistake, that's when you know that that is a person who has integrity and this lying in this country has gotten to a point where people don't even care if they are found out as liars which is very very disturbing you know lying we learned when we were kids it's not it's not okay to lie and then we become adults. 
and we just lie all the time. Now, we live a lie, and some people tell lies. And they're two different things. We have been, we have been born into a society based on a lie. Uh, and we are acculturated in our American society to just go for material success. That's it. That's, that's life in America. You work 24-7. Your focus is on material success. You have to present yourself, you know, in interviews. Uh, you have been, well, it's kind of like it, it comes as, it, it's just infused in you. Oh, keep up with the Joneses, or better yet, outdo the Joneses. We carry ourselves through life as if we're actors and actresses on a stage when we leave our home. The pretense, the mask we wear, the, oh, I want everybody to love me and approve of me and respect me and yada, yada, yada. So we have learned to behave accordingly. That's the pretense. And everybody has to really do that work of self-reflection and reevaluation of your beliefs and your values and all that kind of stuff and how you live to come out of that pretense. And it does take a lot of work. Lying outright, that person has an issue with lying. But so many people do. It's very, very important to clear that up. It's crucial because when you don't, you are absolutely part of this nightmare that we are living. You break down trust. Relationships are destroyed. You know, and when you don't have trust in a society, when you don't have trust in relationships, when you do not have trust in communities, you have no foundation in which to organize, build something firm and healthy. That's why, yeah, that's why I have been saying this for eight years. We have to clear up our own lying, living a pretense. And, you know, when I listen to people who say what he just said, you know that this is a man who is speaking the truth about who he is. Because you don't even speak those words if you haven't done work on yourself. Why do I say that? Because th those words don't even come to you to speak unless you have done work on yourself. To stop living that pretense and to stop lying. So the lying, you know, I was listening to this video earlier today and I realized oh my god this this kind of lying that he's talking about with the Department of Water Resources that has broken down trust in your area of Oroville and well the surrounding areas and the areas down south yes of course trust has been destroyed because the Department of Water Resources lied to you lied to you. So how can you trust them now? Especially when you get people like Scott Cahill, who is an expert, and other engineers who have come out and stated there are a lot of problems with that dam. 
So how can you trust the Department of Water Resources when they seem to be the only ones who are saying, it's fine, don't worry? Well, of course you can't trust them. But the Department of Water Resources has manifested this themselves. Not people like Scott Cahill or the other en uh, engineers, and certainly not all of you guys who are asking questions, legitimate questions about what is going on with that dam. And when you can't get answers to legitimate questions, that only destroys trust even more. And then, well, rumors start. People, what can you do? You have to speculate. Now, you guys in that area, you already went through a terrifying experience. On short notice, you're all having to evacuate for your life. Nearly 200,000 evacuating. Many of you stuck in traffic trying to get out of that area. So what, it's, it's um, two years later, now you can't get answers, and you're hearing conflicting stories from the dam experts independent of the Department of Water Resources and what the department is saying. So, it, this, you know, you, <laughs> you're left in a position where now, of course, you have questions, but now you're being painted as crazy. And that really pisses me off. Um, and, uh, you know, as I was listening, I, I was thinking across the board, the lying in this country has become so extreme and anyone who questions what the lying, what the liars are saying, or anyone who is speaking the truth and it conflicts with what the officials are saying, you are, uh, you're just, you're humiliated, degraded. Uh, this is our country now. This is what's happening now. And that's not okay with me. It's just not okay with me. So, um, there are, I will link below to Scott Cahill's channel. And there are many videos that you may want to listen to. Many are about a year old, but I, well, based on my research, it doesn't appear as if a lot of the problems, and it wasn't just the spillway, but a lot of the problems have not been fixed. Okay, so now, uh, what is the, um, the level the water level of the lake. All right, so it's at, uh, well, new data will be coming in. It's 8 o'clock on the East Coast, so it's 5 o'clock for you guys. Um, but according to the Department of Water Resources, their data, it's at 891, 891 feet, and they claim that at 900 feet, they'll begin releasing uh, more waters. Look, um, please listen to Lisa, and I believe that is her name. Um, listen to what she has to say here uh, in this video. Um, how how do how can we even trust their data? I I don't believe that we can. You know, I did take note that for the first time in my checking this site, it held steady at 890.95 feet. If you go back, and you can go back easily, um, you know, it was, let's see if we can get it, but I have never seen it 
That's just the outflow. Um, well, you can check around on the site and you can get back to it. But I have never seen this lake level not change, and it did not change for like seven hours, and um, which seemed a little odd to me. So, yeah, how are you supposed to even trust a Department of Water Resources site giving you the data? Um, it's, you know, all right, I will link below to everything. Now, I am starting here, but I've got to go to my other browser because I wanted you to see this. Oroville Mercury Register. They have an editorial that is such a slap in the face to all of us, but particularly you guys in Oroville. And if you're not calling them to complain about this editorial that I'm going to read, then, uh, well, I don't know. It, do you not have respect for yourself? Um, it, it was so outrageous and unbelievable. But um, these storms, right? Now, when you're having forecasts, of rare atmospheric river storms to soak California this week. California is already drenched. Now three atmospheric rivers. Um, California may get two months worth of rain from a series of atmospheric rivers. Uh, California will get more snow, possibly two months worth of rain. Whether what? Are atmospheric rivers actually a thing? Oh yeah, they are, and they're going to soak California. When you're getting from so many mainstream media publications when meteorologists, this is what they're saying. You've got three storms back to back and it's going to flood out, you know, California. And you're looking at these levels. Of course you have a lot of questions. Of course you do. Anyone who has a working brain cell in their brain would have questions about why are they not releasing water, especially when you heard from a, and I'll pull it up now, when you have an Oroville spokesperson giving this interview and talking about how 855 is the level that is the flood protection level, and they begin to release water at 855, and you're now at 891 with these forecasts for these three atmospheric rivers. Um, when you hear, and this was January 30, 2017, right before, suddenly you're, you're being told to evacuate immediately, and 180,000 of you are on the road trying to get away because the emergency spillway collapses. Okay. Um, she, this woman here, talks about how they like to keep 50 feet, 50 feet, and that's at that level of 855 feet. They keep 50 feet to accommodate snowmelt, and storms. The inflow. Okay. You're at 8, and you were at 880-something when these forecasts came in. And then you have the Oroville Mercury Register. See, I didn't even think that I would be able to get that into this video because it's a different browser. Oroville Dam is fine despite what the internet says. Okay. Wow, man. This is unbelievable. Well, apparently we're all about to die again. Editorial board. This is the position of the Oroville Mercury Register. Oh, boy. If you guys buy this 
um, I, you need to not buy it. Not buy it. This this paper needs to go away. Well, apparently, we're all about to die again. The internet says so. And while the internet often says we're all about to die and we don't, for some reason, people still unquestionably, unquestionably believe the next scare to come down the information highway. Holy shit. Wow. So, it is with the latest local scare involving the Oroville Dam spillway. The lake is close to full and another storm is rolling in, yet the reconstructed spillway isn't being used. That led someone to decide the spillway was broken and things were out of control and water was going to spill uncontrollably into the Feather River and flood Oroville and points downstream and we were all going to die. And once you've reached such a conclusion, it's no fun unless you share it. Isn't that what the social media is for? Are you kidding me? This is so degrading to every one of you, to all of us who are posting on the dam, but to you guys especially. How dare they? How dare they publish an editorial like this? Considering what you went through last year and considering that there are professionals, experts on dams, who are saying something's very wrong with what we are hearing from the Department of Water Resources. No, what this Oroville Mercury Register is saying, okay, mommy and daddy lied to you two years ago, but now, now you should be, believe them. And if you don't believe them, there's something wrong with you. Don't you like that? Liars always do that. There's something wrong with you that you don't trust them. Everything is backwards. Everything is backwards. There's so much information on the internet that it can overwhelm the healthy skepticism that is necessary to separate the good from the bad when it comes to social media. Well, that's your friends telling you stuff and they wouldn't lie, right? Oh, right. The liars say you lie. Differentiating between rumors from facts is tough, especially if the rumors feed a fond bias or a deep-seated fear. In those cases, there is a tendency to accept the worst and run with it. The Department of Water Resources has not been providing the information and has not been answering questions for the longest time. They set up this whole, uh, well, people questioning on social media, they have, they have created this. Not social media, not all of us on social media. The perpetrators somehow always go free. And I am sick of it. And it's gotten to the point where, well, now, up the wazoo, whether it's the Oroville Dam or the flooding that is occurring or the weather modification or the geoengineering. No, we're just crazy. I am so sick of this. There's still plenty of deep-seated fear surrounding the spillway dating back to February 2017 when 180,000 people were told to flee for their lives. <laughs> Two years later, a little over two years later, still, there's an awful lot of evidence that leads people to think, okay, something is very wrong with this spillway, and you know what? It is in this video where Lisa points out a lot of what is wrong, as well as this video posted yesterday. These are damn experts, okay? These are not just people on social media who, you know, have nothing to do but create rumors. These are professional. Professionals. These are what we need. 
in the Department of Water Resources. People like them. We need people who tell the truth. And we have so few. And yes, of course, you guys are scared. You, and <laughs> for good reason. So when the latest internet scare was introduced, it found fertile conditions to grow. This newspaper started getting calls asking why we were ignoring the biggest story out there and not letting people know they need to evacuate because the river is going to flood. Uh, because they don't need to evacuate because the river isn't going to flood? Really? Okay. Climate change. Global warming. Oh my God. Rain flooding all over the country, uh, flash floods all over the country. We have mainstream media constantly saying rain is no longer like the rain years ago. Now rain comes down, torrential downpours, flooding out communities, flash floods happening, uh, leaving two feet of water in communities. Climate change has made weather unpredictable, unpredictable. And this newspaper has the gall, gall, to just say, well, because there's no reason to evacuate and because the river's just not going to flood. Well, rivers are flooding all over the country. And when you have forecasts coming out and saying, oh, Three atmospheric rivers are going to soak California. This is so unbelievably outrageous, outrageous, that these people could actually publish this, say the things that they are saying. The Department of Water Resources has been able to release enough water through the Hyatt Powerhouse to keep the water level within the parameters, parameters of its flood control plan. And the sheriff's office started getting the same calls. Corey Honia, uh, Honia, I don't know, and his staff had been over to the spillway when it was used earlier this year and watched as everything worked fine, just fine. Well, no, it didn't work just fine. And, well, you can listen to the videos to find out how it didn't work just fine. Um, they shut it down prior to getting up to the number of CFSs, Fs, <laughs> CFSs that they wanted to get to. Why? And then people were saying the slabs had buckled, leaks were, um, you know, apparent. They shut it down and suddenly you see all of these construction workers on the spillway. So, yeah, something is amiss. Then the sheriff went over last Friday just to double check that everything was fine. Yep, just as expected, the spillway will work if it's needed. That's not what he said. That is not what he said. What he said was... Um, there's no imminent danger. Imminent danger. And he never said the spillway will work if it's needed. So here we have liars. Once again, the past couple of years have apparently clouded our memory. It's May. The lake is supposed to be full. Uh, no. And yeah, Lisa points that out in her video that she posted today. The last time the lake was full, bad things happened. In the winter that followed, Department of Water Resources kept the level low until the spillway repairs could be completed. But this time of year, the lake should be full. Well, she points out, mm, no, wrong. Um, having the lake full in July is okay, but not in May. Um, because, and especially with these forecasts, okay, um, and May, you, you'd still be getting the snow melt. 
All right. Um, I, I'm, I, 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 I am. Look, lying is not you, for me. Uh -uh. I have a real problem with it. <laughs> um, at noon Thursday, the lake surface surface water elevation was 890 feet above sea level. That leaves room for more than 175,000 acre feet of water. Um, Department of Water Resources increased releases through the powerhouse. Like what? That's the high. The um, the oh power plant. I. Is it Hyatt? I can't remember. Um, all right. So they increased their releases Thursday and Friday, and it feels it has enough room to handle the latest storm without using the spillway. While we're quick to hammer Department of Water Resources failings, you can check that on the internet if you haven't been paying attention. Yeah. Lying sex of shit in the Department of Water Resources. So many problems with the dam that have been neglected for years and years. It got an unsatisfactory report, uh, uh, status from a two, uh, 2018 report. And this is what this paper can say, oh my god, we have to give the department credit for updating its flood control manuals. Where are they? Where are they? Why don't, why don't you talk about that manual? Uh, and you can read, you know, oh, okay, the earlier manual dated in the 60s and these calculations that took into account a dam on the Feather River at Marysville. That was never built and, accord, um, and ignored the levee capacity of the river downstream. The new flood control plan is much better, and we're willing to give it a chance to work. Well, I posted on the Department of Water Resources still using the flood plan from the 60s. So where is this new flood plan? That plan probably isn't enough for those who really want to believe the worst and are sure we're all going to die. We have one bit of advice for them though. Don't schedule your funeral funeral quite yet. Absolutely outrageous. Such a slap in the face. This paper has literally just um, does not care for its readership. Doesn't care. They can humiliate you when the concerns are so legitimate it's look you know i don't know what to say about these people but we've got a real problem with americans and i'm tired of listening to people who say oh americans are good and that no no most are not sorry sorry the department of water resources has created this drama they themselves have created it by their lying, by their withholding information, by their lying about uh, Scott Cahill coming down to the dam, claiming that he never went to the dam. Um, there are so many problems. Engineers writing on all of the problems that still exist. And the Department of Water Resources just keeps saying, it's fine, it's fine, it's safe, it's fine. Not good enough. And anybody who has a smidgen of health within them that their brain hasn't been so damaged by all of the uh, disrespect that we have received from our officials um, should see right through this that now I'm not saying that the dam is going to fail I'm saying that there are so many legitimate questions about that dam, the height of the water right now, the level of the water, the forecast with these storms. So you get a Department of Water Resource spokesperson to come out 
and clear it all up with facts. Not just say, it's fine and it's common for this the uh, level that it is at now. No, it's not common. And Lisa points that out. Oh, well, she actually uh, looks at the data and proves that it ain't common at all. All right, I will link below to everything. I'm sorry for going on. But this kind of behavior has to stop. And you know what? The only way that this paper will get it is if you guys in this area, you call this Oroville Mercury Register and you you tell them <laughs> that this was not okay. This is not okay. And you stop buying their paper. But this kind of this kind of, you know, behavior and relating to others here in our country, this has become the norm. This is how people are treated today. You wouldn't have seen this 20 years ago. Now, because we never hold anybody accountable, this is what has manifested. So we need to start holding people accountable. All links are below.